In this presentation, we first look at the energy theorem for simply sealed complexes, then combine it with entropy to get the Helmholtz free energy Hamiltonian. Both uh, energy and entropy enjoy nice arithmetic compatibility, interesting functionals. First to the energy theorem, a finite abstract simplicity complex is a finite set of non-empty sets which is closed under the operation of taking finite uh, non-empty subsets. The connection Laplacian encodes the incidence of different sets. Matrix is unimodular. Its inverse is therefore integer valued. The energy theorem tells the sum of the matrix entries G, X, Y. Think of them as potential energy <coughs> values. Is the Euler characteristic of the complex. Uh, the other hand, the Hodge Laplacian is the same size. It lives in the same Hilbert space, but is never invertible. Here's an example. The complex with five elements and Euler characteristic one, the sum of the matrix elements of G is also one. In this one dimensional case, we can form L minus G, uh, and uh, which is agree, agrees with the signless Hodge Laplace. And we come to this in a second. So, first, a little bit about the history of energy. Thomas Young, seen to the left, was the first to define energy in the modern sense. Both kinetic and potential energies are related to the Laplacian in geometry, the Laplace equation is named after Pierre Simon Laplace. He was also the first to understand gravity, potential theoretically, and by the way also postulated uh, first the existence of black holes. So it was uh, Leibniz who defined the term vis viva as the product of mass and the square of velocity, and it was Émilie du Châtelet who clarified the relation of energy and momentum before her these notions had been confused. Potential theory is important when conservative forces are present, like gravity or electromagnetism. So uh, for any Laplacian, any geometric space, the kernel of the inverse integral operator defines a potential. And given additional measure rho, one can look at the potential theoretical energy, with it, which incorporates all interactions. Uh, this is in general infinite, but for nice measures, smooth measures of compact support, this has a chance to be finite. <coughs> First steps in potential theory was developed by Newton and Green, who dealt uh, with the Laplacian in three-dimensional space. It was Rees who worked later the potential theory, uh, worked out the theory of pot potential theory in two dimensions. Two-dimensional case is especially important because of complex analysis. So here it is. You see uh, the logarithmic potential. I see the natural uh, potential and uh, the energy is called the logarithmic energy. <clears throat> in three dimensions, that's the most familiar one, uh, we get the 1 over r potential, which enters Newton's law of gravity, or Coulomb law of electrostatics, and the classical situation deals with finite many mass points, in which area case one disregards the self-interaction, the, the, the particle doesn't feel its own gravitational force. Uh, in order to prove the energy theorem for simplicity complexes, we need some mathematical tools. The important one is the boncare hopf theorem. It's a theorem for graphs and applies for simplicity complexes because we can look at the uh, simplices as vertices in a graph and uh, uh, combine them if with a, with, a, with an edge if they uh, are con one is contained in the other, and that's a barycentric refinement graph. So here's the boncare hopf theorem for any locally injective function on the vertex set of a graph. There is an index uh, given was 1 minus the other characteristic of the stable sphere and uh, then we can, uh, the, uh, by induction, one can show that the sum of the indices is the other characteristic. And the special case if we take the dimension, dimension on <coughs> if the graph has come from a simplicity complex then the dimension function is a locally injective function and in that case we just get the sum of the omega x is the other characteristic, which tells that the uh, other characteristic of the barycentric refinement graph is the same than the, than the other characteristic of the original simplicity complex. Interesting for us in the energy case is fx equal to minus dimension of x. In that case, we get the index omega x times 1 minus the other characteristic of the, of the sphere. And that's important in the proof of the energy theorem. Wanker and Hopf both built important bridges to modern topology. Hopf is close to me because some students of Hopf, like Specker or Stambach, were my teachers in college. Uh, gauss bonnet can be obtained now from Poincare-Hopf by averaging over a probability space of functions. So take any probability space of 
locally injective functions and then take the expectation of the index and you get the curvature. Uh, particularly a nice case if you take the uniform measure on all colorings or if you take IID random variables at every vertex, in that case one gets a curvature I call the Levitt curvature, which is uh, <coughs> particularly elegant. Uh, so here are port portraits of Gauss, Bonnet and Chern. Chern did a higher dimensional version of Gauss-Bonnet theorem. In any simplicity complex there is also some hyperbolicity. Uh, uh, first of all we can add uh, two graphs, this is called the join, it has the same properties like the join in topology, the join of two spheres is a sphere, join with a two point graph is a suspension, and we find the generating function of a complex and now we take the join, uh, then uh, the generating functions multiply and the genus of the also multiplies. So here's a, a key formula, uh, it tells that uh, the potential uh, is curvature and uh, the potential is just the sum over all uh, possible potential values coming from in, from the other uh, simplices and in order to verify this uh, one can then use the, the gauss bonnet theorem. <clears throat> so for any simplicity complex in some sense there is a dimension function defines a, a Morse's male uh, system. <clears throat> So now uh, one can ask is it possible to uh, relate the Euler characteristic or other topological notions with the spectrum? This is a question, general question of Mark Katz uh, who has asked this and uh, uh, this goes much beyond the Euler because Euler didn't have matrices or eigenvalues at his, his uh, uh, you know, to work with. Uh, the theorem is that uh, the number of positive eigenvalues minus the number of negative eigenvalues of L is the Euler characteristic. So L is this connection Laplacian. Uh, so we can hear the Euler characteristic of a complex. And uh, the proof is just a deformation argument. We just look at the, the determinant of a matrix when we deform from the case when t is equal to zero is the case when we have uh, uh, the original complex and then t equal to one is if we have added one, one, one cell. And what happens is there's just one eigenvalue crosses the zero uh, the axis. This allows us also to express the Euler characteristic as a kind of a logarithmic energy of zero, kind of logarithmic potential. And uh, uh, for the Betty numbers and kind of other topology, it's kind of this first the bad news that there are complexes like here. We have complexes which have the same uh, spectrum, but they have different. Uh, so the example one on the left, so they're they have, they have different Betty numbers, but have the same spectrum. Uh, so we cannot hear the, the uh, topology, really. But after a barycentric refinement, things become nicer, and uh, we can actually do it after a barycentric refinement. Uh, that's uh, uh, in, at least in one dimension. <clears throat> Uh, about Wu characteristic that generalizes Euler characteristic, it's a very nice functional because we, we don't take just now the omega values of the in individual simplices, but we take the omega values of adjacent or intersecting simplices and and uh, 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 multiply them and then add them up. It's a kind of an easing easing type uh, interaction, and then we get an energy. We can also define it for different simplicity complexes and see how they intersect. And it has a relation with this connection. Uh, Laplacian. Uh, it was Wu who has uh, introduced this uh, functional and I learned about it from an article of uh, Branko Greenbaum uh, who dealt with high dimensional uh, evaluations. <clears throat> now we get to something different, the zeta function. We can look at the uh, zeta function of any Laplacian, just take the eigenvalues and take the lambda k eigenvalues to the power minus s and sum them up. That's uh, the spectral uh, zeta function. In this case it's very uh, interesting uh, because there is a functional equation. You see here kind of some symmetry in one dimension. There is a symmetry uh, uh, zeta s is zeta minus s and we will actually uh, 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 have, we have functional equation. <clears throat> and in order to prove this we need a generalization of Cauchy-Binet Cauchy uh, formula. Here it is. It, uh, it deals with uh, with uh, uh, coefficient of the characteristic polynomial, the case coefficient of a characteristic polynomial of a product of two uh, 
matrices can be expressed using products of uh, minors. Uh, it's a simple theorem, but nice and uh, generalizes, generalizes uh, Cauchy-Pinay, which is the case when k is equal to n. And uh, so in the case when the matrices are, yeah, in the, ca the case when the matrices are n times n matrices, this is the usual formula for the product of uh, determinants. <coughs> the functional equation tells that the uh, zeta function evaluated at s, zeta function evaluated at minus s is the same, but that means just that the eigenvalues of L square uh, have the property that the reciprocal eigenvalues are also there, it's kind of symplectic type of structure, and uh, equivalent to characteristic polynomial is palindromic, and that's what we are proving, and prove that using, uh, I call it artillery lemma, <laughs> just look what happens when we deform again, when we deform the matrix and see how these characteristic polynomials change, and to analyze that we need this cauchy binet result. So then we can look at the barycentric refinement of a of a complex and refine again and again and again. Look at the what happens with the zeta function. We get in the limit to a zeta function, which is which is nice and regular, and uh, seems to have all the roots on the uh, on the imaginary axis. I was not yet able to prove this, but here is the explicit uh, f formula for the limiting zeta function. I call it the dyadic zeta function because it's kind of the dyadic, a dyadic limit. There is no kind of interesting number theory here because uh, in the dyadic di world uh, the, the, the primes are there are no primes in the in the in the dual group of the uh, dyadic integers. So so it is kind of not not so interesting, but still it's a it's a beautiful uh, structure. Here are other expressions for for this zeta function in the limit. One of them is an abelian uh, integral. Now to the Betty numbers, uh, they were introduced by. Betty and further work done by Emmy Nerter. So one can hear the cohomology of one-dimensional complexes. So here is an example we mentioned this already, but you look at the spectrum, you look at the number of eigenvalues one, that's your uh, a zeros Betty number, and then the number of eigenvalues minus one, that's the Betty number B1. It's quite interesting. Uh, uh, something different now, entropy. <coughs> it, uh, goes well together with other characteristic because both uh, uh, functionals entropy and uh, and other characteristic have nice properties. So uh, what we have is uh, we have a probability space here, finite probability space, and uh, then uh, we can look at the at this functional minus p x log p x, and uh, it's a nice functional. Shannon has introduced that in. In communication theory, Boltzmann in the context of statistical mechanics, and uh, there's a result which Shannon proved, and it's up to a choice of base in the logarithm, the only additive normalized multiplicative function on probability spaces, but is exa has exactly the same properties than other characteristic. Also, the other characteristic is the only additive normalized multiplicative function on simplicity complexes. So it's very nice to combine them. Clausius was the first to introduce entropy. He also is credited for the first law of thermodynamics, and Joule investigated the relation of heat with mechanical work. Here's Bolt, the pictures again, Boltzmann and Shannon. So Boltzmann, the father of uh, statistical mechanics, and Shannon, uh, father of uh, information theory. Uh, we can combine now these two things, energy and entropy. Both uh, are nice, they are, they are nice to, to, together, uh, and that's what Helmholtz and Gibbs uh, Gibbs have done. Uh, so Helmholtz energy is uh, when we take uh, u, which is the which is the uh, internal energy, and then take minus t times the entropy away. T is a is a is a parameter, uh, a temperature parameter. And it's very interesting here to to study that functional. There already is a finite dimensional situation, we have critical points, we can look at how they bifurcate, there are already catastrophes happening. It's a very interesting story. And uh, we can also look at them, I got interested in that because it's it's not only space, right? All the characteristics deals with space, but if you look at the, a wave moving, then you, you, you get a probability measure, which is from quantum mechanics, which is the sum of the squares of the amplitudes of the wave. And, and so we can look at dynamical systems, we can look at Schrodinger equation, we can also look at nonlinear 
uh, uh, Schrodinger equations, which is here, kind of this Hamil uh, Helmholtz Hamiltonian is a nice, is a nice choice, and uh, it, it's kind of it's an integrable system, nonlinear Schrodinger type system, and uh, uh, so this is the uh, another functional which I think is interesting. It's the hydro uh, called a hydrogen functional. It's also motivated by physics, and we have the uh, inverse uh, inverse g of l. And now we can look at the trace of L minus G. That's all how I originally looked at uh, this. And uh, it's it's interesting because the tra this trace is the sum over the Euler characters of the genuses of the unit spheres. So it has an interesting, it's an, it's an interesting, uh, uh, no, the sum of the, the trace of G is the su sum of the genuses and the trace of L is just the sum over one. So if you take the difference, we get the sum over the other characteristic of the unit sphere. And that's an interesting functional uh, to study. Uh, uh, just also, uh, again, you know, when, if you look at the uh, generating function of the complex, then you can study uh, uh, notions like f0 minus f minus 1, which is the other characteristic of f prime 0 minus f prime minus 1, and that's exactly this hydrogen uh, functional. So here it is in one slide. So it compares a little bit with the other characteristic. I find it an interesting functional. There is a nice relation between this L minus G operator and the Hodge uh, operator. The Hodge Laplacian uh, in general is different, but the signless Hodge Laplacian, where you take the absolute values of all the entries, that's uh, uh, in many cases equivalent, uh, then you have that identity. I call this the hydrogen relation. It's quite useful to study the spectrum of, uh, uh, the, for example, the spectral radius of, uh, of, uh, of, of, of Laplacians, of Yirchhoff Laplacians. Here it is. I mean, the, the reasons why I call it hydrogen relation is because it's kind of a, uh, in the case, if you look at the uh, hydrogen opt operator for the hydrogen atom, quantum mechanics, it has the same structure. <coughs> then another thing which is very general, which is for a general uh, simplicity complex, we can look at the, the entries GXY, the green function entries. And in some sense, they are kind of like intersection numbers between stable and uh, 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 and or unstable manifolds. In this case, gxy is omega x omega y. That's the other characteristic of the intersection of the uh, uh, stable and unstable manifolds. It's uh, also known in the under the name uh, star. So the unstable manifold is the star of a uh, of a of a of a simplex. And so there are all the simplices which contain. That simplex. It's not a simplicity complex, but so in, in, in particular the uh, GXX, the diagonal entries of the green function, is the other characteristic of the star of X. So uh, we can also look at the intersection of uh, unstable ma manifolds, and so we have a we have the GXY, we have the MXY, which is equivalent to LXY, and then we can combine them. Then we get the difference between the Euler characteristic and Wu characteristic. This is very interesting also because it's the Euler characteristic of the boundary in, in nice Euclidean situations. Uh, Kelly was the first to realize that heat energy is a, a form of kinetic energy, and Faraday is one of the founders of electromagnetism. So, the principle that charge is located at the boundary is kind of uh, one of the uh, you know it under the name Faraday cage, for example. So here's the, the boundary of a geometry uh, also con uh, consists of singularities, but you have you have in general, that's a general uh, a fact that this order characteristic minus the Wu characteristic is the order characteristic of the boundary if you have a, have a complex which is uh, locally Euclidean except at the boundary. <clears throat> so here are some faces we have seen, and that's the end of this presentation.